I've been getting a lot of requests, uh, especially from Jenkoop owners, how we did it to do the external wastegate. It here's how I did it. So here's a good example of internal wastegate turbo, which is what you're looking at right now is the BK1 2.0 turbo. This guy is an actuator connected to the solenoid, which commands commanded by ECU. So this controls the boost. How it works? It basically has a preload spring right here and it will actually push and pull to control the boost so internally so this is internally wastegated and that's the flapper right there I don't know if you can see it so this thing opens up closes which is directly connected to the actuator so it will let the exhaust gas to escape so that it could control the boost so in order to up the boost you could go with the higher spring pressure so it could preload more pressure but either way the downside of actuator is it'll taper down at the end so what i mean by taper down it'll actually up it'll make peak boost and that's going to be peak torque and it will taper down towards the uh, higher RPM. So let's say you're targeting 20 pounds. You can only do 20 pounds and it will go down to like 15, 14. Um, the stock one is about, uh, about eight to 10 pounds. So it's very weak spring. So it'll make like 14 pounds and then it'll go down to like nine. If you get just genetic tune, it will do like 17 and go down to like 12. So the torque graph dies down at the top, does the horsepower actually also dies down, doesn't shoot up. So you can actually technically make this to the external waste gated and basically have it to hold down, hold it a little more so that it will shoot up more horsepower at the top. But either way, it's gonna be very spiky uh, with the internal waste gate because spring is constantly fighting and actually try to fight to hold a certain boost that we command. Anyhow, that's how the internal wastegate works with the uh, actuator type. This is single scroll turbo and how the manifold design is very simple. You get four runners, so you can actually add the external wastegate just right in the center. I have the BK2 turbo, which should be making easy another um, 60 to 70 horsepower with the tune and proper setup. So those who don't know the difference between BK1 and BK2 turbo, not only BK2 turbo is slightly bigger, electronic wastegate, so it controls the wastegate with this guy right here. Since BK1 doesn't have and connected to the computer, you need the actuator put on here or put an external wastegate. For this case, I'm going to go with the external wastegate uh, because the external wastegate could hold more boost, easier to set up the dump tube from the wastegate. Those who don't know how the whole turbo and external wastegate, internal wastegate works, simply that's how you control the boost. So this is where the stock actuator is connected to. It has a wastegate internally. And this is what's called the flapper. This is where that all that noise coming from. So when the flapper opens up, it will dump out exhaust gas, so it lowers the boost. Um, so in order to put the internal external wastegate, you have to either tap into the manifold. Um, but on this case, this is a twin scroll turbo, so you can't. The ideal setup would be for this case is the where the flapper is, where it's meant to be uh, dumping out the exhaust gas. So what I'm going to do, oops, here is the uh, so remove the flapper instead of welding it completely open. 
because this is going to be on the way anyway. Um, so I'm going to take this unit out. To do that, you just have to grind this down and this will come off and this thing will come off from there. That's how I actually got built in there. Um, I'm also recording this so in case I mess up, I'm going to weld this back at this position. My plan is to basically separate it here. So this pipe is just going to go to the O2 housing. I'm going to block this off and have the external wastegate set up. So it's going to be like that. Depends on the how the exhaust sits and the O2 housing. Then it will just dump around the O2 housing. So I'll hold the certain boost. I think this is 14 PSI spring. And I'll just use a manual boost controller and hold it at like about 16, 17 pounds. It will at least make easy 60, 70 horsepower and possibly with the meth kit 100 horsepower over what I'm making right now. So, and it's gonna be also dumping the exhaust out so you're gonna hear that external wastegate noise. So I already saw the advantage of having the external wastegate on BK2 Turbo, um, just on the dyno. Once again, the dyno is only a tool to tune the car and you could also see what the car is doing while doing the pull. So this is not like, oh, I feel faster. I think I, I feel this. I think I feel more response. I couldn't make the full pass on my car because it was leaning out. My point is actually it comes in way quick, quicker than the electronic wastegate. This graph is uh, from Orion's car, by the way. So definitely comes in faster. It'll, it's holding the boost uh, flatter. Obviously it's lower on the boost because I'm only doing at wastegate spring, about 15 pounds right now. But I think I'm gonna probably leave it like that for this event because it comes in so quick that I'm, it's somewhat sketched too. So, and I don't have a meth kit or anything on the car, so I'll just go safe and probably it'll shoot up to like 16, 17, depends how you beat on the car, because it will actually spike over time. So this is how I did it. Basically, I weld the whole thing pretty much together. Uh, unlike the Evo 9, Evo 10 Turbo, it didn't have any divider to the flapper. So basically I had to make my own divider. I weld this pipe straight to the wastegate uh, flange. So this one's actually together and then I kind of filled up everything. I made the other port just for the exhaust. So at the end, the whole flange had to be welded together and I'm not worried about this turbo. It was in good condition. I got it for pretty cheap from a customer that was doing the turbo upgrade. Shout out to Chase. And uh, basically, I'm not planning on, you know, doing anything. If anything, I'm gonna sell the whole thing together or if Turbo dies, it will just die. I'll just save the uh, wastegate itself and some bugs for the O2 sensors. And that's about it. So probably better for customers if anyone's interested, but it's a lot more fab work so I don't think it will be ideal for BK2 customers to jump on it. Uh, I'd rather just, I'd rather recommend to go with a bigger turbo. But BK1 guys is definitely a good upgrade. You can't beat the OEM quality too. You need some, this one's only temporary right now just to make it to the event. Not the previous pipe. Hey, I don't like these 90 angle couplers. Since BK2 uh, turbo inlet shoots up more, uh, you'll have to make some custom pipe here. Um, like I said, not the best design right there. And uh, also, and one more thing you gotta notice is that you will need a blow valve because K1 Turbo has the blow valve already on the turbo, but BK2 doesn't. And you know how the BK2 has a little blow valve right there. So you're gonna, you won't have the blow valve. So you'll need a blow valve as well. Also for the vacuum source to the wastegate. You could actually hook it up to the intake manifold, but in my case, I like to be like somewhat original. So I put it like, I just welded a bump MPT fitting here and just tap into the wastegate. So this way 
it's just gonna hold 14 15 pounds rock solid hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and uh, we have more to come and especially if you're here to watch what happened to O'Brien's car and what the future plans are um, subscribe and wait for more